Hi, Integris team. My name is Gary Gallagher. I've been called <clears throat> the father of the food, but the origin of the Front Opening Unified Pod is much larger than just one person. So I'm here to tell you the real story, which ties in closely with Integris' story and has a few characters that you may recognize. I'll go into the details, and then I have three FOOP trivia questions that may surprise you. It all started in the early 90s. I just left IBM and moved to Colorado to join a small private company headquartered in Minnesota called Empac. I was responsible for new product development. The early discussions about the transition from 200 to 300 had begun, driven by growing chip size, increases in chip demand, and the semiconductor industry to increase productivity and efficiency. I believe there was a better, more practical way for clean transport and clean processing of wafers than what was done with all seven previous generations of wafers. All previous wafer sizes from one inch to 200 millimeter used open cassettes. The wafers were placed in cassettes and were transported from tool to tool by three typical means. Transported in just the open cassette, or the open cassette was each time placed in your transport box, or in more advanced fabs for 150 and 200 millimeter, the cassette was placed into a bottom opening Smith pod. All three of these methods, I believe, were risky, heavy, cumbersome, to say the least. Early 300 millimeter discussions were already in progress to stay with the same handling strategy of all previous generations of wafers. We knew if there was ever a time to change the way these large wafers would be processed and transported, it needed to happen at the very early stage of this wafer size transition. We also knew there would be many challenges to changing the semiconductor industry to a new way of wafer handling architecture. The first concept drawing of a FOOP was drawn in a napkin at a Bennigan's in Colorado Springs, and I shared that with the Senior VP of Sales and Marketing at Impact Jim Holiday. I pitched him the idea of eliminating open cassettes, transport boxes, and Smith pods to transport these large, heavy wafers, and instead combine them into a single unified pod with a side opening door that's sealed to a pod shell. Hence, the new name Front Opening Unified Pod, or FOO. The idea was well accepted and soon key MPAC team members were assigned and Project Sapphire was born. We filed patent protection on the early design and created the first machine prototypes. We knew the FOO would not be accepted in the industry if it could not be automated. And we knew we needed an automation partner. We found that partner with Unoptic in Yana, Germany who was a supplier of 200 millimeter Smith automation, and we formed a two company partnership under the name of Infab. After seeing our prototype, Inoptic was completely on board and developed the first prototype load ports. We now had a systems approach to 300 millimeter wafer handling and processing, and we could take that to market. We gave the first group the product trademark name Capsule, based on the connotation that it was a combined cassette pod for silicon. We first took the idea to Applied Materials and their CTO, after listening to our presentation, said it would never happen since wafers with cassettes have always been placed into the AMAD processing chambers. We looked at this as a setback, but that did not stop us. We then took the idea and presented it to the IDM that was leading the 300 millimeter transition and they loved it. They assigned a tough but fair young engineer for me to work with to implement the first high volume manufacturing force. So here are my three trivia questions. Who was that young engineer who was assigned to implement the FOOP at the IDM leading the transition to 300 millimeter, who 20 plus years later is part of the Integris team? Two, which IDM leading the 300 millimeter transition did this engineer work for? And three, what was the wafer capacity of the first high volume manufacturing food? I'll give you a few seconds to think about your answers. That tough 
but FAIR engineer was Clint Harris, who most of you know is our senior VP, leading the Microcontamination Control MC division. Clint worked for Motorola, which was the first IDM to lead the transition to 300 millimeter. And Motorola believed the ideal lot size for 300 millimeter was not 25, but 13 capacity for faster cycle times. So the industry's first production FOOP was a 13 capacity. In 1997, Motorola nominated the 13 capacity 300 millimeter capsule to Semiconductor International Magazine. And the capsule was selected for the Editor's Choice Best Product Award, receiving front cover press. In 1999, MPAC merged with Floraware and formed the new company named Integris. It is amazing to me that today, all the 120 plus global 300 millimeter fabs have a sea of hoops transporting and processing the most advanced chip technologies. None of the FOOP's success would have been possible without the overwhelming support of many dedicated Integris individuals over the last 20 years. For me, it's been a great journey and our FOOP journey will carry on for many years into the future.